Hey, this is Dr. Kelly Cagle. And for season three, we're doing things a little differently because we know that a healthy and happy dad and mom starts with a healthy and happy husband and wife. So I decided to bring along my husband, Josh, as co-host so we could share some real life stuff of the ways that we learn how to fight to make our marriage thrive. You are listening to season three of the Parenting IQ podcast, Learning to Fight. Hey, you guys, welcome back to the Parenting IQ podcast. You've got myself, Kelly, you my husband, Josh Kegel. And today we're going to be talking about some of the back to school grooving that happens whenever the kids go back to school and really our whole lives end up shifting a little bit in goods and then tough ways. And I, <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? I told him as we were prepping for this, y'all, I said, you are the loudest coffee drinker. And he said, I'm going to just take a big old sip of coffee. I was like, don't do it because everybody's going to be hearing how loud I like my of, coffee. you do like your coffee. I like my coffee. And every morning, y'all, he sips that coffee. That's yummy. Okay. Well, it's yummy, but please quit sipping your coffee. Y'all hear that? That's every morning how he said, and then he does that afterwards and he huffs afterwards. So <laughs> here we go talking about grooving back to school. And that's one of the things that uh, we don't really fight about, but I'm just like, oh my gosh, he's the loudest coffee drinker. I don't know that I've ever told you this outside from now. Well, we're going to fight about that because I'm <laughs> drinking my coffee. <laughs> please don't and recording okay yeah please don't uh, annoy the listeners not those of you that are watching on our youtube channel by the way if you're watching live hello everybody but if you're just listening then you have that option if you want to see josh's goofy self loudly sipping not just hearing him sip his coffee very loudly but actually watching him with his number one dad mug, then you can head over to YouTube and watch that as well now. But we do want to remind you to subscribe to the Parenting IQ podcast wherever you're listening and also share with your friends about these episodes. I would be so grateful for that. You can also head over to drkellycagle.com, the website, if you want to get today's show notes. But then also when you're there, look around for all of the resources that we've created for you to really just help you come alongside you as you raise lifelong learners. We really are so grateful for your support of this ministry and our hearts, guys, um, is just for transformation of lives. We want to come alongside you, not by your our words, not by the research that we do or the things that I write or that we say, but through the power of the cross. And I wanna say that you are prayed for. We just got done praying two minutes before we hit the record button here. Uh, you are being prayed for. Uh, from us. And I know that we just want to come alongside you in this journey of life. So welcome. Yeah, welcome. You know, obviously, we're going to be talking a little bit about what might be going on with all of us right now and the back to school groove or routines that are going to have to be established, or maybe they already are. Um, but you know, as we as we contemplate what we're dealing with, in getting back into the school groove. Obviously, there's a lot of life changes, whether it's a first timer like in kindergarten mm -hmm. or even pre-K, or it could be someone that's entering their last year as a senior. Yeah. Uh, so there's all types of things that might be going on in the home. And we just want to try to spend some time today talking about, hey, what are some things that maybe go on mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning? But also that it's so important in this kind of groove that we're talking about, there's healthy grooves, yeah. there's non-healthy grooves, and trying to identify what are we going to do, where are we going to be, not just in this moment, right? Because I don't know if it's, if, if anybody else is like us, but these last couple of days or this last week, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, boys, you guys got to go to bed. You got to yeah. you got to get in bed by 830. And they're like, well, it's still sunny outside, yeah. you know, and you're just sitting there and, you know, I'm kind of like a loud, you know, not I could be a screamer. I'm, I'm a screamer. <laughs> get in bed. Let's go. You know, and so yeah. uh, you almost like feel like you're threatening them mm -hmm. for their lives type of type of thought to get them in bed. Right. And what are we trying to do? We're trying to reestablish some grooves mm -hmm. that that are going to be needed for the long haul. Because yeah. I think what we're talking about here today 
is is not just what we're doing now, but we're going to recognize that, hey, a lot of these battles that take place um, about life can also happen after the wear and tear, right? Mm-hmm. After after a season where our energies maybe not at as strongest because we're all maybe on this adrenaline high. Mm-hmm. And that adrenaline high could be for a month. Yeah. It could be for two months, right? And then you start realizing, hey, wait a minute. Or maybe you don't realize, but you're starting yeah. to wear down, right? And that's whenever we're wanting to prepare today about that future, right? Yeah. Where you're starting to wear down your mind, maybe you're not getting the rest that we, Mm -hmm. you know, need and things like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's really big because uh, we're going to talk about some of the things along the lines of choosing your battles wisely and what kind of fighter you are and respecting one another. And as we were talking about some of these areas and and kind of digesting some of the points that we find important for us as we get back into this group, because we are getting back into the groove ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. We've had the summer where the boys could stay up a little later. uh, But at the same time, now it's that reestablishment of the routines and really the why. Now our kids are a little older where they learn can read time. So we, mm-hmm. if we tell them, oh, you know, you're going, back, but it's not 830 yet. And mm-hmm. so we can no longer get away with just sending them to bed at 7 p.m. If they've had a tough, a tough day. Right. But I think that it's important to now help them see why. And because they ask, well, why? Why are we going to bed when the sun's still out? So we're going to talk about some of those things that pri- prioritizing in our lives. So that's where we're going to start off. Prioritizing what's in our place. So part of the thing of choosing our battles, and you and I have done this. In fact, we did it really big this year with deciding to homeschool mm-hmm. is we looked at what's what we have on our plate and figuring out, man, I don't know how we can squeeze school in a traditional school or a, even we were part of a university model school before, how we can squeeze that in with everything that we have on our plate. And we kind of shifted things and we looked at life at the bigger picture of what really belongs, right? What are healthy things? What's the salad? What are the greens that are giving us life and nutrition? I only want steak. I know. I know. We were just talking about that too. But thinking about the balance, okay? Mm-hmm. You have your steak, just the balance of what's on our plate with the prioritizing. And we decided to homeschool for the sake of time. We wouldn't have been able to do that. So choosing our battles wisely. Now that's just us, right? Right, That's what's something that we decided to do that we needed to do. But thinking of everyone else listening, what are some of the things that maybe they can think about uh, does this belong on my play? Some of the conversations that we've had. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times I, I just start thinking about the beginning of things and guys, if it's, if it's y'all, a, a lot of, a lot of minds can be, Hey, I'm centered around work. You know, I'm thinking about all the things that I've got to get done at work. Right. And then maybe you've got a, a good list of items that you or the wife have given you when you get home you know, of, well, why hadn't you painted this door or you got to stain these cabinets or, you know, I need you to do this, this or this. And so all those things, whether you're getting them done or not, they're still can be on your mind, right? Of these to do's. And so sometimes you're left with, Hey, when, when we are getting into this school routine, you, it's not just about you. It's not just about your wife, but it's kind of like this everyday hurdle to just get the kids into the bed. You know, it's almost like that's the end game so that you can relax, right? You got to, they got to get home. You got to maybe do extracurricular activities. Um, You know, you got to get the food on the table, get it all done. Then they got to clean up and, and, and get ready for bed, brush your teeth. It, It just seems like it can be a very fast paced deal depending on when your kind of evening could start, yeah. right? And so I think for, you know, us, what we have struggled with in the past, when we when we battle into these school uh, moments, right, it can be centered around the fact that maybe, you know, I, I tend to, to stay at work to about 5.30 or so. And then sometimes in the past, it would be even later, and I would never communicate those things to my wife. Mm-hmm. She's calling me six o'clock, where are you? I'm like, well, I I had to stay late. You know, I've got things I'm going to do. I'm still going to be another 20 minutes, whatever it might be. And then I'll head home. Well, what that was doing was compounding. And until we were getting into these 
you know, big, big tizzies Mm -hmm. about, well, I've got to do, you know, you've got a lot to do or, you know, you don't even know when to cook and, you know, whatever that was going through your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of times you were getting home and the the dinner was already cold because I'm thinking, oh, yesterday he got home at 530. And so that's when I should expect him because, and then he wouldn't. And then I'm calling. So now I'm frustrated. So I'm already calling you out of like a nagging right? The nagging wife. I'm saying, Hey, where are you with some kind of attitude in my voice? And you are already overwhelmed with all of the things that, because if you had to stay late at work, obviously there were important things that needed to get done. And and then you are already overwhelmed and blah, blah, blah. And it just was not a good combination. No. And so moving on to that, our next point is voicing the need for help. It's not a sign of weakness, for me to say, hey, I really just would love for you to tell me when you're coming home and we have some kind of an agreement because that solved so many of that, that issue that was happening daily mm-hmm. in, in our marriage. And it kind of helped you organize this groove in your mind of, hey, if I stay at work until 630, my kids are going to bed at 830. I get them for two hours only for that whole day, you kind of started backtracking this routine in your mind that you said, man, I don't want to just see my kids for one hour outside of eating dinner with them Mm -hmm. and having to clean up and all of all of that. So it was a conversation where I voiced my need for help. I just really, we've got to do a better job at this. And I'm one that does not like asking for help, right? You know that. I'm not one that I, I, it's not a sign of weakness. I know, but my friends tell me all the time, Kelly, just be vulnerable. Vulnerability isn't bad. So I'm learning that too, as I'm now 36 years old and still learning. But it's so true that if I tell you, you're my teammate, you know, so me telling you that I need your help, you know, it's just like, oh man, that's where I can help you better. And I think that a lot of times, just the other day, you even asked me, hey, with homeschooling this week, I think it was Wednesday when you called and said, can I do anything with Titus and Micah while you are in Frisco with Levi at soccer? I would love to pitch in and and help with something that Mm -hmm. I can take off your plate. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You don't even know what this means. So taking the initiative to even offer help goes a long way to for your spouse. Mm -hmm. Well, again, you know, when you get caught up in the me, when you get caught up in, you know, the the things that I've got to do, or that I feel like is most important, and we are not communicating our needs well, we fight, you know, Mm -hmm. or maybe we're not even like actively arguing out here, but, but we're not as close, Mm -hmm. uh, in, in those season or in in any moment, right. It could be even in that week that, uh, we, we, you know, we're in our own little minds, our own little to do worlds and stuff like that. And I think where, what we're, what we're really wanting to capture here for everyone that's listening and ourselves is the facts that, you know, as, as, as the parents of the home, we have such a huge role to play first as a as a married couple Mm -hmm. because our kids are watching yep you know they're watching and and sometimes the things that i don't like in my kids could be things that i they're mirroring yeah they're they're mirroring things that are in in me and so you know when when we're going to take and decide hey we're going to die on this sword we're going to battle over this Mm -hmm. or or we're going to fight over that you know we need to make sure that we're that we're uh, looking at the big picture of, hey, are these things that worth worth fighting for Mm -hmm. most important? Or is there another strategy, another way that we could still attack, right, these agendas and and get to the same goal? For example, me calling you ahead of time, Mm -hmm. maybe it's at 445 and saying, hey, Kelly, um, I'm not going to make it until probably six o'clock. Yeah. And then honoring that six Mm o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. And so just just in that has really helped us uh, it, you know, in, in, in that daily groove, mm-hmm. especially when you're on such a tight schedule with going to school the next day. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's really good. And I think another part too, that we found is our kids are getting older. And so we've just been more intentional about assigning chores to them. They've always had little things that they do, but even this week I was like, man, I've got all of these things I need to get done 
but the laundry has to get folded and put up and I don't put them up, but, but anyways, that's beside the point, but the dishwasher was full and there were dishes in the sink. And I just said, you know what, I'm going to have them do it. And, and just kind of be more intentional about giving them things that honestly are life skills. Mm -hmm. So it's not, not only are they pitching in, but they're also learning responsibility. Mm -hmm. And our kids are 12, seven and five. So obviously the five-year-old's walking around with the knives and the, and Levi just runs over there and, and gently grabs the knives from him. And he's like, well, I want to put them up. You know, there are things as obviously I was also in the kitchen. So, but it, it's this fact of where can you bring them along mm -hmm. to get them in a groove too? Because it's this message of, man, it takes all of us. We are a team and it takes you being intentional about communicating, but it also takes me or whoever, the mom or the dad communicating to the kids. Hey guys, let's all get together. Let's clean up the house real quick because we have a really busy weekend ahead of us. Well, again, we're thinking about the school year that's about to get started or is started, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of times it can be like a new year. You have all these new year resolutions. Mm -hmm. You have all these you know, aspirations, the things that we maybe suffered through last year that we're not going to do this year or whatever things that we might not have liked. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're going to correct them this year. Yeah. Well, I, I heard it said by a man, Zig Ziglar. He mm -hmm. said, when you find a healthy habit, you hang on to it for dear life. Mm -hmm. Bad habits are easy to develop. Healthy habits are are so difficult That's good. to to hold on to. And yeah. I think what we're in here to talk about, uh, guys, is, is that if we are not going to focus on the fact that we're going to stay, that this is our lane, you know, we're going to do our best to stay in this lane, mm -hmm. you know, and, and deciding which directions we're going to go for this school year, uh, whether it's in the types of activities we're going to be a part of, whether it's in the bedtimes that we're mm -hmm. going to commit to, uh, whether it's in the 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 time that mom and dad are going to set back and and be intentional about a a date or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. we, we we you know the Bible says without a vision people perish. Yeah. So we have to have a vision for this school year. We have to have a mindset with the knowing that hey we're going to get upset. We're going to have some good days. We're going to have some bad days. Mm -hmm. And you know when we are in these bad days. We got to be quick to recognize what is happening. Yeah. And I want to touch on something real quick. You mentioned it a little bit whenever you were opening up about the need for sleep. Mm -hmm. And you and I, when we were first becoming parents, and this is just a, an additional thing, we really prioritized sleep from the moment we became parents. When mm -hmm. the babies yep. were little, we did sleep training and all of the things. And we've always been really particular about bedtime and honoring that. And that's because you and I recognize that a lot of our also bickering happened whenever we we ourselves didn't have good rest. Right. We knew that we were not our best selves. Now, the thing is, you do not require as much sleep as I do. Man, if I don't get my eight hours of sleep, I'm not as strong the next day mentally. I'm not as clear. I'm not as productive. And so, and you're not like that. You can... For a few days, you can run on six, but then you need a reset, mm -hmm. right? But the thing is, the bigger picture here is I came across something the other day about a month ago, and it just really has been ringing in my mind that some on the radio, they introduced this idea of sleep divorce. Hmm. And, and it's in where people prioritize sleep more than sleeping in the same bed as their spouse. Because, so you're saying they prioritize too much. Uh-huh. That that healthy balance of this group, this routine. And I want to just share some of these findings with you because I think that it goes along with the season of parenting. And this is a survey that was conducted by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine of two thousand a little over two thousand people ranging eight ages eighteen to sixty five years old. Now, here's what they found. And I'm really just honing in on the ages of 35 to 54 because I feel like that's the season of school, that you've got kids in school in this, right? Okay. And um, so ages 35 to 54, 46% of them 
almost half of these 2,000 people sleep in another room on occasion. Hmm. So they go to a separate room so they can get their sleep. Now, ages, same age group, 34% of them. So a little over one third of these 2,000 people sleep in another room consistently. Wow. And when I was reading some of the comments from this New York Times Post article, I, I, it, it just went on with one of the comments that really stood out to me was this girl. And she said, my parents often slept in separate rooms. And for as long as I can remember, in fact, they live different lives for mm-hmm. as long as I can remember. And so it's just this, this awareness of, guys, there's got to be a middle ground of communicating Maybe, maybe you lay in bed and you read a book, but go to bed at the same time. Because I feel like we we always, for the most part, probably 99% of our marriage, we've gone to bed at the same time. Very seldomly have we gone to bed at separate times. But the the connection, and I'm not even talking about sex here. I'm just talking about the intimacy of conversations, of wrapping up your last breaths together. A lot of times we pray together. We actually like to pray together more you than we do fall asleep more right. yes more than we do because a lot of times I do fall asleep and I'm so sorry I start twitching I'm like oh no I just fell asleep yes mm-hmm. lord wrap it up <laughs> and uh but but that intimacy that happens even in that moment of wrapping up the day together in unity well I think you know with this survey here obviously people are seeing that hey sleep is very important mm-hmm. um I I I I'm kind of surprised, you know, I know. That, that that would be happening. But, but you know, also it could be different people's um, times of work. I mean, there, there's there's such a a lot that could mm-hmm. go into that. I highly would encourage uh, married couples to try to create that that groove or that healthy routine of going to bed together. Uh, whether you're going to watch some TV or read or even just talk, whatever that that is a time, at least for us, Mm -hmm. uh, until the kids are in bed, it's centered around them, right? It's very difficult for husband and wife to just throw them off to the side and us sit down and have really meaningful discussions Mm -hmm. or or intentionality. And so I think that is actually why I I believe that we do that anyways, Mm -hmm. really, is because that helps us connect yeah or that is maybe the only time of the day we feel like we can connect Mm -hmm. and sometimes we don't even really talk a lot about anything very impactful Mm -hmm. um in in and so because that's a lot of energy i mean you know you you can start the the week maybe you know especially when there's football season golly in football season my my mind i have to i get more tired on that Wednesday, Thursday, because you want to watch the Monday night it's football. It got it had you up till twelve. There's only a few people that I know of that can live on, live on like four hour, yeah, you know, sleep and stuff like that. And and I wish I could mm-hmm. because you, you know you do feel like you got a lot to do longer days, longer days. But I would say that uh, really how how it, it all com- compounds, yeah, right. So I, I just I just think that in this season. Uh, when we're starting school this year, let's let's all make sure that we understand that our energy mm-hmm. really, really helps us be at our best. Okay. Now, moving on to what kind of fighter you are. That's exactly where I want to head. Thinking about the self-awareness. That's what you and I were talking about, that I feel like figuring out what kind of fighter you are. It's more of this studying yourself and thinking, man, what are some of the things that overwhelm me? What are some of the things that send me over the edge? And it doesn't necessarily have to make sense to the other person because some of the things that I tell you that overwhelm me, you're like, Kelly, that's just so petty. That's so silly, but you're not me and you're not a woman and you don't have the same, you know, wiring that God created me with. And so Sometimes it doesn't have to make sense. Last episode, you talk, talk, talked about a little bit about wanting to f- how you like to fix things. You're a fixer mm-hmm. and you have a headache. Where's a Tylenol? Let's fix this, right? And so I think that a lot of times it's just this matter of telling the other person, this overwhelms me and the other person just recognizing, oh, I had no idea that overwhelmed you. Okay, now I understand you better. 
So this fighting episodes that we're talking about is about us doing this internal digging of the self-awareness journey and then also communicating those findings about ourselves with the others. And I also brought up last week, uh, last episode about the difference between maturity and how the longer you've been married, the more you've gotten to know one another and adjust this groove of one another and how we're wired. And I think that that's so healthy for us to tap into that, but also not just to internally know these things about yourself. Well, and I, and I would caution that just because we've been married for a long time, you can drift. Yeah. And so inside these, inside these, these routines or the, our daily walk guys, we all know, tell me one person that if you were to say, Hey, how are things going? That they're not going to respond in some form of busy. My life's busy. I got a lot going. Mm -hmm. You know, I very, very seldom talk to people and just say, ah, you know, I don't have nothing to do. Yeah. You know, a retired person still feels like that they're busy. Um, so that's just the, that's, that's kind of the culture we're in. And so we, we need to understand that through time, it can be a, it, it's a good thing. We, in this day and age, we get a lot done. Okay. As people, we get a lot done, but what we are, what we're after here, we're after good, healthy relationships. So as we uh, look to fight, like you're talking about knowing yourself, mm -hmm. well, I, I, I know that I get hangry, mm -hmm. but I don't recognize sometimes that I'm daggum hangry, Yeah, you know, <laughs> until I, I've, you know, blown a gasket. I'm hungry, you know, or, or somebody else yeah. has to call that out in me, right? Mm -hmm. I think you, when's the last time you ate or I think you just need to eat or well, whatever. And sometimes you get home and you're like, I didn't have lunch today. And I'm like, well, then eat lunch. Why are you waiting until 530 to eat or yeah. six o'clock to eat? That's, you don't come home and then put that on me, the yeah, responsibility to have dinner ready yeah. when you are a grown man yeah, and you true. get into your own needs. And I'll tell you, I'm like a mama bear or something, oh you know, because I get home. Yeah, because don't think about eating or whatever. And I get home and I'm I'm ready to eat. Yeah. And you're supposed to know this. Yeah. And where is, uh -huh. you know, and so so all, all I'm sharing with you guys is, is that we need to be so devoted to like you're saying, knowing yourself, mm -hmm. because in knowing ourselves, not that not that it's all about us, but, you know, our life is to be a reflection of serving others and to do to serve others. Well, we got to know who you know, where mm -hmm. we're at. Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no, that's good. And I think another thing along those lines, too, is knowing if you are a planner, because when we first got married, I've always liked plans. In fact, my dad is the way that he lives his life is if you are on time to something, you're late. Mm -hmm. If you're early, you're on time. And that really, that's kind of how I've been wired too. I love being at least five minutes early. If I'm going somewhere where I don't know where I'm supposed to be going, I like being there 30 minutes early because then I can find my place. Whenever I've gone to job interviews or something back in my lifetime, sometimes we used to drive the day before. Remember, we did this before. I don't remember doing that. We, we would drive and me come across, okay, this is where I need to go tomorrow. That is, that just helps my anxiety not mm. to build up. It drives us nuts and it drives uh -huh. me nuts because I, you know, I don't, I don't want to be early. I want to be there when I need to be there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just like the airplane. I mean, golly, you, you want to talk about fighting, start, start preparing to go on a trip or, <laughs> or do something. Good golly. I want to get there. If I, I'm going to decide, Hey, wait, it's a domestic flight. So we don't have to be there except for an hour early, you know, and, and, and you're like, no, it's got to be two and a half hours. And then if it's international, good <laughs> golly, we might as well just bring a tent. <laughs> You know, uh, I mean, you know, and so when you talk about some crazy moments, you're supposed to set out to have this great time yeah. and all of a sudden you're caught in the hustle and bustle and you're just, ah, you know, and uh, because we're different. Yeah, we're different. And so the thing that has helped So what us, happens is, is you always win and we get there super, super. No, we meet somewhere halfway. Do we meet somewhere we halfway? We meet I somewhere like halfway. Well, I don't always, because we do always arrive early. So we're always on time for my book, but we don't arrive 20 minutes early. We arrive 10 minutes early. Mm, and wow. so that's, that's deep. Well, but it's halfway. Okay. It's halfway to what 
I know that according to my standards, I would leave earlier, but I also know that Josh is this way. So I'm going to meet somewhere in the middle. And so maybe we've never outwardly spoken this agreement, but with trips, you learned, you, you actually have told me this, that you see how much less pressure there is if you have time to go park and not wait for a shuttle and blah, 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 all the things with, as far as yeah, with traveling. I'll give you credit, you know. And so the length of the line no longer matter just because you had some extra time. Then you could walk in and go find the coffee shop or go get some burritos, whatever. It just, you know, you kind of picked up on, oh, this is why we do this. I but get it. But that's about after every trip because I'm still pressing <laughs> That, hey, this next trip, we don't have to get there that yeah. early, you know, so I kind of cause that on my on my own. But that's just knowing knowing ourselves yes. and stuff and yeah. and knowing that, guys, we're probably going to get into a tizzy mm-hmm. when, when it's centered around taking a little trip or doing something. You know, yeah. the, I would I would venture out that ninety nine point nine nine three percent we're fighting about these trips. But anyways, the 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 grooves that we're after, though, uh, is trying to understand that, you know, everything, everything that's going on is centered around communication. Yes. It's around communication. And then the self-awareness that leads into respecting one another. Mm -hmm. That once I've learned this about myself, when it comes to the, the groove of what I need to make sure that I'm a healthy person, healthy wife, healthy mom, healthy, you know, businesswoman, then same thing for you. All of the all of the titles that you hold, not that you're holding one above another, but we are our individual selves mm-hmm. that come together right. to make a whole. So I have to respect what you tell me, even if it doesn't make sense to me, that I have to know, wow, I'm going to honor you in that. If that's what helps you, then I'm going to go there with you. And, and not that we always do it right or well or perfect, but it's that respecting that Okay, thank you for sharing that with me. Um, I understand you better right. now. And, and, and for the audience, guys, I, I'd like to just share that, you know, the, this respect that we are talking about is, is huge. Um, we, we as men, I think, you know, the, the stigma years ago had always been that the, the men work and, the, and, the, and the, the women, they're doing all the other tasks, Right. And I do think that in some regards, it's changed and the complexion of that has changed some, mm-hmm. right? Where you have, you do have uh, more women in the workforce. Yeah. And so that has kind of caused the, the men to also have to evaluate, hey, you know, we're not just doing yeah. uh, a work only situation. And so I, I think it it's a great thing yeah. as long as we understand how we're going to go through what does our lane look like? Mm-hmm. Right. And and so this respect is, is it could look a lot of different ways. Maybe you're breaking down your day as to who with strengths and weaknesses, who's better at doing what. Mm-hmm. So uh, whether it's, you know, I, I, I'm a, I feel like I'm a better cook. We can fight about yeah, that so right now. I, I Well, straight up, I just talked about being vulnerable a little while ago that I don't like this. And it took me a while to just say, you know what? Although I'm the woman and I should be the better cook, I just am not. No. <laughs> I'm not. No. I will cook the same five meals because... Three. Okay, three. Guac is my one strength and I'll hold on to that. Nobody can take that from me. And gravy. Those are the two things that Josh still hasn't even tried to nail down because I've got them. But everything else, you're better. Everything else. Yes. And so... and yes. I feel and, good. Okay. I'm so glad my that... competitiveness I'll, just kicked in. But really, it's me learning, hey, this is my weakness. So can you, in your strength, pitch in? Well, but, but at the same time, you know, there up until a year and a half ago, really... Um, we didn't recognize that no. it was just a, it, we were forcing this, mm-hmm. you know, Hey, you, you cook or whatever. And so what we've done, we've tried to re-strategize where, you know, maybe I'm doing more meal prepping on the weekend mm-hmm. or cooking the meats on the weekend. And then all you got to do is just throw it in the oven yep. and just slow warm it up type of thought. And it's really helped us what will, you know, gain time Mm -hmm. and and also gain where people, you know, where your kids aren't just always whining or me about, well, why are we eating this? We don't like that. Mm -hmm. And so it takes that, that fight that's going to end up happening Mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think though, when we're thinking about the respect aspect of, 
of uh, this this uh, battle plan, we need to make sure that we understand, hey, these are some things I can take off of your plate that I yeah. can control, right? Mm-hmm. Or And maybe it's vice versa. Maybe sometimes yeah. you're doing the dishes. Sometimes I'm doing them. Sometimes, you know, we're doing whatever it takes to win that day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's really good because it all boils down to me. It boils down to communication. Mm-hmm. It boils down to, man, this is the day that I've had. This is the week that I have ahead of me, Kelly. And I, I'm going to need you to, you know, I don't know, pitch in with blah, blah, blah. But you know where those com- where that communication gets kind of crazy is whenever you're saying, because uh, if we don't strategize, if we don't understand, hey, this is where this is the routine or the groove that we want to get in. If you don't do that, then all of a sudden through the wear and the tear of tiredness or mm-hmm. or unhealthy habits, you end up accusing each other. I'm doing everything here yeah. or you're doing nothing there or I've got to take all this and what you're doing, you don't recognize what all I'm doing, or you don't see, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the effort that I'm putting into this. Mm -hmm. And we create these all or nothing conversations Mm -hmm. that are just really unhealthy. They can be pretty dark. You're really left with this merciless, graceless. This accusation. um, Yeah. And, 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 and it's easy for us to go there. We got to look for the, the nevers, the always, Uh, you know, kind of words that we're either speaking or that, you know, we're hearing and Mm -hmm. help each other break those down. Hey, listen, it's not always, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? It's not never. Those are very strong words, Mm -hmm. all encompassing, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think sometimes that's just a a lackadaisical way to argue or to fight. And so we don't want to fight that way. We need to be very careful with what we're doing. Yeah. And this goes back to choosing your battles wisely. That's also this recognition of the words that I'm using to fight with or to communicate my needs. Because then that le- leads into your the self-awareness of yourself, what kind of fighter you are, the self-awareness of, man, I use always and never very often because we've called each other out and even our kids too. They use those words all the time. And it's more of, Hey, how about very often Mm -hmm. or often you just change the word so you can still express what it is. Yeah. And, and even like, I think about, we're talking a lot about food, you know, maybe we're hungry, but I think about (laughs) the kids, they, they'll say I'm starving. Yeah. Well, I, I like to correct these boys because one guys, we live in a wonderful country, no matter what, yeah. we say or see in this country, we are blessed and we need to be thankful. We need to help our kids understand those things. Yeah. You know, there's not a starving child in my home. I don't need to hear those words. There are starving kids in the world yeah. and you're not one of them, right? So really what you're doing is you understand that expression, mm-hmm. right? But you're trying to help them be more accurate in their assumption of themselves, mm-hmm. right? And in and, and the situation that's And I think hand. another word is love. I love this. And whenever you think about the word love and you really dial back and you look at what it stands for, the true meaning of love, it's you shouldn't love this thing as much. And so again, all these lessons that can come from these moments, you know, that you that you can hold sacredness to words, Mm -hmm. to expressions. And so helping one another about life and what it is that you have going on. So that way we can respect the, what you have, because I do love you and I do want to honor you and serve you along with my children, along with myself, along with my home, and most importantly, the Lord. And so I want to honor him with everything that he's entrusted me with. I want to steward all things right. well. And so maybe you're looking at yourself like, well, you know, I don't know where to start or, you know, maybe you don't really know as a as a couple where, what it is that that you need to talk about to dial in on these healthy routines or healthy habits. I do think about those conversation starters yeah, uh, that you've good. created yeah. um, that that really and truthfully what what had happened to us and mm-hmm. in, in, in many times is, is you get into the, the couple of topics. You talk about work, you talk about kids, and you just ask, how's your day, right? Yeah. 
And what happens is, is there's not enough color. There's not enough yeah. connection to the, 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 the marriage unit that we need to be our best selves for everything else, whether it is work or mm-hmm. our kids, right? Mm-hmm. We need to be healthy here. Um, and so I think I would encourage each one of you, we had to create, we created a little treasure box. Remember mm-hmm, back mm-hmm. in the day that had these popsicle sticks that had topics on them mm-hmm. and we would open that little box and pull them out. We don't do this anymore, but so it obviously was, this is years of us trying to be intentional still with our conversations. Well, we recognize that there was some times where our, where our life was just kind of blah. blah. It was just gray. It, there wasn't, there wasn't really, uh, uh, again, Death. it was about kids and you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and work. And so there were some things that, that, that you wrote down that I thought really helped us. And then these kind of, these conversation starters have come out of even yeah. those, those things, right? Yeah. So what those are is there are 60 questions, about 15 different topics. So I went down and I was thinking about 15 different topics and expanded and turned them into 60 questions that will help get conversations going Mm -hmm. about different things in life, whether they are planning for the future, career, goals, you know, like thinking of your family mission. What are you really truly about? Because those are things that are important to talk about, but don't really naturally come to your mind because you do have this groove going and you've got this routine and you sometimes you get comfortable and it's harder to get past that. So guys, if you do want to get, your hands on these conversation starter cards. We have ours ready to go for our next date night. And um, you can head over to drkellycagle.com and look at the conversation starter cards. I actually, that's volume two for the the couple. Volume one is also for you to have conversations with your kids. And Mm -hmm. I will say I carry that in my car and Levi and I use it every single week driving to soccer because he asks, what do you want to talk about? I'm, I'm so tired by the end of the day. I can't think of what to, ask him. Right. But praise God for those those cards. It takes the effort. The structure. Yeah. It just helps us have really deep conversations. So you can find those guys along with other resources at drkellycagle.com. I also want to encourage you that if you want to share this episode with a friend, don't forget to subscribe and also share it with somebody. If you were just having a conversation uh, with a friend that said, hey, I'm battling blah, 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 getting back to school groove, then Here we go. Maybe this will be beneficial for them. But we do want to remind you, as I said a little bit earlier, we are, you are two different people. We are two different people, but we are on the same team. So let's learn to choose our battles wisely. Think about (laughs) what kind of fighter you are and respect one another, even if you are a super loud coffee drinker.